So here's what I got. If you've watched my videos or you're a subscriber, you know that I've got a video on how to build compound turbos. What I did was I just did a basic video. I didn't go into detail. Now, this truck, I've had compounds on here for about 300,000 miles. So I've tried a lot of different combinations and what have you like that. Um, I primarily want it for towing to have extra power. Uh, a lot of people, they'll comment and they'll say, you got to pay to play. Well, I've done all this on a budget. You know, I can't see dropping five grand, six grand to have compounds on a truck. But it truly is an upgrade that you will love. With the stock turbos, um, you don't really start getting spool where I didn't on this truck until it you know, got up to about 2,000 RPMs. With the compounds, it's pretty much instantaneous you start getting spool. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I got an exhaust leak in here somewhere. And my bottom turbo is leaking oil. Now, I've tried, like I say, I've tried different combinations. What's on the top is a pretty much stock turbo with a bigger exhaust housing. Um, and I'll, I'll go over that. And the bottom is an HX55. Now, when I put that on there, uh, you know, everything I read and could figure out, that was a good setup for towing. But I found the bottom turbo, the HX55, a little bit big. In other words, it's a little bit slow to spool. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the whole thing apart. And I'm going to, you know, of course be replacing the bottom turbo. And I find my exhaust leak. And... You see I have an external wastegate. I'm going to be doing a little bit about that, but I'm going to put everything back together and explain why and what's worked for me and what hasn't worked and the issues, some of the issues I've had. And this is definitely a low-cost setup. I've made all the pipe myself. Um, and... You know, I've had people complain about my weldings. Welds look ugly. But the way I look at it, the thing's held up. You know, I got a ton of miles on it. I love the way it drives. And if you keep your foot out of it, it will improve your fuel economy too. So anyway, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take everything apart. And then I'm going to put it back together and you'll see what's going on. Okay, so I got everything off. As you can see here, the blackness coming down. There's my exhaust leak. I think the last two were leaking. I really couldn't see them with everything in there. All I could see was smoke coming out everywhere. And you can see here on my exhaust manifold how it's black. Anyway, uh, I got some gaskets. I'm throw some gaskets on them. We're cleaned up, of course. But I just want to take note, this is like one of the first steps. You have your exhaust manifold and using your stock exhaust manifold, which I've never had any problems with. Like I said, I got a ton of miles on it. This is actually turned down, if you look at it. So it goes on the truck, let's see, like so. Now, first thing you do, is you take this off and you turn it upside down so this is facing up uh, and that's to give you a little bit more room down inside there the second thing I, while everything's out of here you, you can take note I got actually five inch exhaust and what I did is I took an elbow and I uh, or actually a 45 and I cut it off real short and I welded a V-band connector. You can see the V-band connector in, in there. Now, I got a piece of flex there and then I got a stack coming up, uh, five inch flex, and I just have a straight pipe coming out. But anyway, um, these are like things you can see now. 
So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and clean everything up. I'm going to put my exhaust manifold back on. And we'll move on to what's after that. Okay, so here's my new flange. Now all the flanges are going to be different sizes. This is the flange from the old one. And I'm going to cut this off and weld my new one on here. Now, sometimes you can find these flanges already made on eBay. Or you can make one yourself, you know, if you're so inclined. They're just chunks of steel. Or, you know, go to a local metal shop and get them to cut you out one. Um, anyway, that's my next step is to weld it on this downpipe. Now, about the turbos, this is my top turbo, the first turbo. Um, and you see these clips back here. This is like a C, big C-clamp. And because it's a custom setup, you have to spin the housings around on both of them to get everything to work out right. Because your oil has to go straight through. So the housings have to be spun around. Now, <laughs> these are terrible, like I was just saying. I would try to stay away from anything that has a spring clip just for your own sanity. The spring pops out, the clip pops out, you can't get them back in, you'd be fighting it for an hour trying to get it to sit right. And then to move it a little bit, you have to squeeze it back together. So if you're a little bit off, you know, you're back in the same boat. Now this is also uh, internal wastegate. And you can see the, the mechanics for it here. I just put a piece, a little piece of angle, drilled a couple holes, and screwed it shut. That way, I'm just you know relying on my external. You saw my external, and I'll get into that more. I could not get enough pressure relief from the internal wastegate, so that's why I went to an external. Okay, so the next thing is this one is a five-inch exhaust. Now, if you look at them, you can see this is a V-band connection, and you have a terrible time trying to find a way to hook up your exhaust to that. That's where your exhaust pipe goes. So I welded a V-band connector on the end of it. Now this one was already five. So it fit right on the end of it and I welded it on the inside. Now if you weld on the inside or you get somebody to weld it for you, make sure you cover up the wheel so you don't get any slag welding slag on your wheel with something you know make sure nothing gets down inside there uh, this one is actually four and a half uh, so i'm gonna this fits like right over top of it and i'm gonna weld this on there for that now if you got a four inch exhaust you know this will also work you can take and just um you can cut this thing off cut the flange off and the inside you can see is three inch so if you cut the flange off and then you weld the ring on the outside of it you know that would work there is a little bit of welding skills involved with this um, but anyway you know like I said my welds aren't aren't that beautiful they're functional so what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna go ahead and weld this on there and uh, my flange on there and I'm gonna start putting everything back together and I'm gonna explain how it all fits and goes in so I got my flange welded on here now this is what I mean about the bolts of this thing moving this will move back and forth freely um, it's hard to picture how this goes in there but this is goes to my stock exhaust and that's a t3 now this is almost a stock turbo pretty much stock except it's got a bigger housing it's t4 i found this adapter t3 to t4 they got them all over ebay and stuff and i drilled a hole in the side and that's what i used for my wastegate my wastegate goes in here um the first time i did this it took me three days to put together so I can figure out what's going on I mean it, it's a lot to uh, figuring out how it goes but if you can picture it this bolts on the exhaust manifold and this hangs down 
Okay, so what happens is um, I got a wastegate I'm going to set up next. I'll show you how to set up the wastegate. So I'm going to have an external wastegate in about 20 pounds, which is about stock for Dodge, uh, 20, 22 pounds. So once it reaches 20 pounds, it's going to go through the wastegate and it's just going to go straight down to my primary, my secondary turbo and spool that. Uh, that's the way you can build boost without having a lot of back pressure. So that was one of my issues before I put the external wastegate on. You can see I got a thing here. I'll, I'll show you. I got a gauge in my trunk that shows the back pressure. And I was getting a lot of back pressure. This is before the turbos. And when you get too much back pressure, then it causes high exhaust gas temperatures and, you know, gives you problems. Um, anyway, I also have water methanol on here too that I really like it. I mostly just use water in it, um, except in the winter time, you know, you have no choice but to put um, methanol to keep it from freezing. But at any rate, um, you know, my bottom turbo is bolted on, it's, it's primarily, it's sitting there. And I'm going to go ahead and set up the wastegate, I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so here's my wastegate. I've already taken the screws out of the top. You can see there's a diaphragm in there. And what you do is you work out your color combination of the springs all over the internet, what it's supposed to be, and you set them in there. Now, here's the tricky part. You try to compress that thing. <laughs> yeah, good luck. So what you do is you stick a board underneath of it and get you a nice big C clamp and push down on the top and then compress it back down. Uh, it's the only way you're getting that thing back together is that or a vise or something like that. You wanna use a block of wood so you don't mess anything up. But anyway, I'm gonna compress that, put that back together and uh, we'll move on to what's next. Okay, so I got my wastegate on. One other thing I learned the hard way is I got an oil line first time I think I just bought one on the internet or whatever and it wasn't too good there's a place not too far from me that'll make up any line you want you just take them the fittings tell them what you need and they put me a nice 90 on this side made it nice and long so I can reach around and the only problem was is it let too much oil flow through I don't know if you can see down inside there but what I did is got a a 3 8 flare cap refrigeration is the cap and then drilled a hole in it to limit the amount of oil that goes through so anyway the oil line for your other turbo no longer fits so I just cut off the pipe where it goes into the block and then put a piece of hose in between the top turbo and the, and the oil return that you have normally. And the bottom one, I'm using this for my supply and I have it returning and I dr drilled a hole in the side of the oil pan and uh, soldered the fitting in there. Um, you can see up here top of the oil filter I put a T in there this is where my second oil line hooks up to so I'm using the original one the original line will fit for the uh, top turbo and then this is going to my second turbo so I'm gonna go ahead and stick the thing in there now you gotta pick the whole thing pretty much pick the whole thing up together and set it down on here and you know it's heavy but it'll work Anyway, we're going to do that next. Okay, I want to go over now some of the good things I did, some of the bad things I did, some of the mistakes I've made. Um, like I say, this it, you'll love the way it drives if you do something like this. And it is some work, you know, and you just got to start and you put the first turbo in and you just got to keep putting the pieces of pipe together. Um... You know, and if you don't know how to weld, you know, get a buddy who knows how to weld. It 
if you're so inclined, you know, take some time and learn how. Uh, if you're thinking about doing something like this, having some welding skills will benefit you for the rest of your life. Anyway, I ran this on a completely stock engine for about 150,000 miles, and it was fine. Um, the only thing I had was a three-position tuner, because you do need to um, have the boost fooler in there and have it pump a little bit more fuel in um, to, sp to spool up the turbos. But other than that, I, like I say, I ran on a stock engine. The only thing you have to be careful of, you have to keep the boost reasonable. When I say reasonable, they say the valve springs are good for about 40 pounds. And if you go over 40 pounds, then they say it floats or it pushes open the valves. So that's your limitation right there. But let me tell you, 40 pounds of boost in this thing, and, and you will really tell the difference. Um, the other things I did was... Uh, as you can see, I have a lot of room in the back. I put a body lift on there. I got tired of fighting things like the valve cover and you know, blah, blah, blah. So I primarily did it so I'd have extra room, but I actually really like the way the truck sits like that. So you may think about that. that I actually got a four-inch body lift, and I like the way it looks. Um... The other things are, too, is you can see the batteries in the back, and you say, well, Dodge's got the battery in the front. Well, I got my air filter up front here. Now, what was happening was, in the summertime, I was getting a lot of heat. I had the, originally had the filter in the back here. And I would lose, you could tell it was losing power. So, what I did is just made me a little cradle back here set the battery in the back and move the cable across the back instead of the front. This cable originally fit across the front. Well, it fits just fine, reaches just fine in the back, you just gotta turn it around. Um, the other things are, you know, is like, I found when you clamp on a pipe, because if you make all these pipes, they don't have any beads on there. If you run a weld bead around and clamp on the weld bead, because I actually had problems with them blowing off. I mean, you know, 40 pounds of pressure is a lot. And some of the other upgrades I did, as you can see, my intake here. I made my own intake. Okay, the stock is 3 inch. I have 3.5 going into the intercooler. The intercooler outlets are three and a half going in and coming out. So I got three and a half inch running all the way through and it made a difference. Um, but I have a video on how I made this. If you'd like to see it uh, and how I upgraded that. I also have a video, water methane, methanol injection on there. If you'd like, I got a video on that. You know, subscribe and take a look at those videos. But anyway, it is a great upgrade. Um, I rebuilt the engine about 400,000 miles, and I went all out on the engine. I mean, I put, uh, it's got crank studs, head studs, got 110-pound valve springs. So there's nothing holding it back now. And, uh, you know, it's fun every now and then just to get down on it. But, uh, you know, primarily I have it for towing you know I want it to last I don't race it uh, but it's nice if you got 10,000 pounds sitting on the back of your truck and you got to get out in traffic and you step down and it'll go anyway I hope this helps somebody and like I say be sure to subscribe I got a lot of videos on this I got suspension rear rear spring bushings all kind of things and I'm going to be adding more. I got to do the transmission and a few other things. So you have a nice day. And I hope this helps somebody out.